recruiting never stops in college football. And with the portal's total grasp of everybody's attention, that also includes roster retention. And let's talk about that on this episode of Locked On USC. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Hulkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you're watching me on YouTube or wherever you like to download your podcast, this is just a reminder, we are free, and I want to say thank you so much for coming along for the ride. I hope you're enjoying the show. For those of you who like to watch me on YouTube and you haven't done it yet, there's a red subscribe and a like button. Do me a favor, hit those. It means a whole heck of a lot. And to those of you who already have, again, a very sincere thank you. All right, this episode of Locked on USC is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, so recruiting the best players out of high school for a program's future, it's essential. If, especially if you want to maintain that really strong foundation just to continue to build on. If you want to get you if USC's program wants to get back to where they were and back to where you know Alabama is, Ohio State, and currently where Georgia sits at the top, you have to be able to recruit at the high school level. Now, um, even with the transfer portal, you know, making it easier to win now, um, especially if you have the right mix of players, uh, knowing you have a four to five year player that you can lean on in your program, if not, you know, you want more than one, but if, that's the type of, uh, that's the type of player that is critical to any program. So just as the transfer portal can, you know, fill holes, uh, you know, it will definitely fill in the holes, uh, on a roster. It, it's hard to find guys, um, who a coach you know, who the head coach can trust and will step up um, when it calls for a player to lay down the law. The coach can't always be the, the heavy hand. It has to become, sometimes it uh, the code red uh, has to come from the players. Um, Caleb Williams, look, look, he's heading to the NFL after this next upcoming season, after the 2023 season. Stranger things that could happen. He could stick around. But when you're considered the number one overall draft pick, more than likely you're going to see Caleb Williams play quarterback for USC in 2023 before he moves on to the next chapter in his life. Uh, look, he's the real deal. Uh, and he can handle all the pressure that comes along with being the best player in the country. I'm not talking about being the best quarterback. I'm talking about being the best player. Uh, and he can handle both the mental pressure that comes with it, as well as the physical pressures that come from game to game. The latter of the two stressors, um, he needs help with. He can ha he can handle the mental part on his own, uh, but when it comes to protecting himself during the week of practice and during games, uh, you need those guys up front, that offensive line. <clears throat> Because if you are, if you're trying to maintain a championship level roster uh, without a solid offensive line, um, it's pretty much next to impossible. So, imagine trying to draft or recruit a championship O line every year through the transfer portal. It, it's just not tenable. Um, because if there's one thing the O line needs, any O line. It, it 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 needs time to grow together. It takes time to nurture itself. Um, it's that's the one position where they have to work together. You work together as a team, eleven on eleven, but those five guys from tackle to tackle and the three guys in in between, they have to be able to almost read each other's minds and 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 dance and work in concert with each other. Um, so, yeah, you can bring a guy in through the portal who can fill in a hole and, and learn to adapt, but you 
trying to bring in an entire offensive line that way year to year can't do it won't you won't be successful so yes you know as i mentioned you can bring in a, a bobby haskins he can come in and have an immediate impact uh, but no team <laughs> is going to bring in four to five grad transfers to play offensive line and anticipate or expect them to just be the starters, to come in and, hey, you guys are coming in, forget the eight or nine, ten guys we already have uh, that we've been rearing to and developing, you're going to be those guys. Um, because even if you were able to pull that feet off, let's see, we're able to get four or five starters from somebody else and bring them in, uh, you still have depth issues, not to mention the chemistry uh, that you have to work on. USC's 2020 recruiting class, uh, it might've been light in numbers. I think it was like a total of 12 recruits, but it was heavy in mass. And by that, I mean, uh, they really focused on the offensive and defensive line. Out of those 12 commitments, six of them, half, we're on the offensive line. Of those six, uh, Jonah Monheim and Cortland Ford have been starters already. And they anticipate continuing to be starters in 2023. And now a few years later, you've got guys like Andrew Malek, Caden Stevens, uh, Andres DeWork. Um, they're going to have their chance uh, to replace Bobby Haskins. Brett Nealon, Andrew Voorhees. Uh, those guys have finished their college careers. So again, while the 2023 uh, recruiting class that Lincoln Riley is bringing in has commitments from, um, he's got uh, five high school uh, O-line recruits already in this class. And that's for the foundation to continue to build, to keep building that, to keep building on. So in two years, three years down the line, depending on, you know, how long it takes. One, two, three, or all these guys are going to be able to step in and, and have play a role um, on the offensive line, which makes having to go into the transfer portal less of a need. Uh, so they're, they're not anticipated to have an impact when they come in. If they can, great. Um, but they shouldn't be expected to offensive linemen should not be expected to play their first year in college. Very rare that you get somebody who is capable of it. And if they earn it, hey, more power to them. It just doesn't happen very often. Um, so when you have players like Cortland Ford, Monheim, um, and the class of 2021 part time starter like Mason Murphy. And Gino Quinones, you've got a really good core group of guys that are coming back who are going to be able to help defend Caleb Williams. Um, and again, because the portal is there to fill in some holes, to fill in some gaps, um, you can add to your depth. So Lincoln Riley and, and Josh Henson, the offensive line coach, offensive coordinator, uh, they went out and they snagged a couple of those guys through the portal. You got Michael Tarquin, the offensive tackle from Florida, grad transfer. And then you also have the offensive lineman from Washington State, Jared Kingston. You might have said, well, Mark, you haven't mentioned a name yet. Okay, here it comes. Justin Dietrich, big daddy. If, you, if you've if you been following this show, uh, I've pretty much been kind of saying it without saying it, that Justin was going to be coming back uh, for another year. Sunday night, in typical Justin Dietrich fashion, he just kind of threw out a tweet out there, hey, I'm coming back for another year. Nothing flashy. And that's who Justin is. He's just your blue-collar, lunch pail type of guy. Uh, he could have joined his, uh, his peers and said, you know what? I've been through enough here at USC. I'm ready for the next chapter in my life, and, and I'm going to try my hand at the NFL. Well, the NFL knows it, and Justin knows it his position is going to be playing center at the next level. So after when Brett Nealon went down with his Achilles injury in the conference championship game, Justin slid over from guard 
and he took over at center and he played center in the Cotton Bowl almost flawlessly. And uh, I mean, let's face it, the offense put up 45 points and that game also was without Andrew Voorhees. So Justin's value to the offensive line is cannot be stated enough. And, and this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the show. It's hard to find guys who a coach can trust uh, to step up when it, you know, when it calls upon a player to kind of lay down the law. That's, that's where Big Daddy comes in. That's who Justin is. Uh, Caleb Williams is going to command respect because, well, one, he's really good <laughs> and players are going to gravitate to that, but he's also a team captain. But so is Dietrich. And he also demands respect, not so much for himself, uh, but for the Cardinal Gold uniform. He wants his teammates uh, to respect the game the same way he does. Look, uh, this has kind of been out there. The last game of 2021, uh, it kind of ended the last the last week, week and a half, it kind of ended with a revolt. As if you don't remember, USC was finishing their season on the road at Cal. That game had got postponed earlier in the year due to some COVID stuff that was still lingering around. By the time that game came around, USC was four and seven. Clay Helton was gone. Everybody was just waiting for the season to play itself out. And there were a, there were a handful of players on that roster who didn't even want to play in that game. And there, you know, has, I wouldn't say half, but there was a group of players on the on Howard Jones Field waiting to get ready for practice. There was a bunch of players it's still inside the McKay Center. I was in my usual position, taking pictures, you know, kind of doing my notes and observations. And I had never seen Justin. Uh, he, the dude had blinders on, and he had one goal in mind, and that was to get his ass back inside the McKay Center. He was going to make sure that those players inside who who were trying to have a vote on whether or not they should play in the game, they didn't have a vote. The, the vote was you either get dressed and get out on the practice field or Justin is going to make sure you never, ever see the locker room again. So keep in mind, this happened after Riley had already been named the USC's new head coach. This is why Justin Dietrich is Riley's number one recruit and the most important player on the roster after Caleb Williams in 2023. I mean, imagine Caleb playing his final season at USC without Dietrich in front of him. You, remember, you're, you're replacing Andrew Voorhees, you're, you're replacing your center, Brett, uh, Brett Nealon, and you're replacing um, Bobby Haskins, part-time starter at left tackle. And you're going to replace the guy who can play left or right guard proficiently and the guy who you anticipate playing center? Whew, that's a scary proposition. Justin is just, he's one of those guys, he just does think, when you hear the coach say, that guy does things the right way, they're talking about Justin. Everything he does. You know, in many ways, Justin reminds me of Ryan Khalil. And you know what, I'm thinking about this right now. Remember uh, Coach Chuck Berry, Ryan Khalil, protect the Twinkie, Will Ferrell, legendary Coach Chuck Berry. There's an NIL thing here. And I, Ryan Khalil was a center and team captain for USC, just like Justin Dietrich. I think Ryan Khalil needs to come back 20 years later and come back as Chuck Berry's protege and coach up Justin Dietrich and teach him and ask him what he needs to protect. What's the most important thing in his life? What an NIL opportunity that would be. I could see it happening. I would do it. So the other thing that I think is really important, and I'm making light of it, but Justin Dietrich keeps that continuity going um, that Riley talked about last week during his uh, program, state of the program sit down that he did with the media. Uh, that's how important Justin Dietrich is. And it's great that he's coming back. 
All right. I need you to head on over to LinkedIn because as a small business, uh, you might be a small business owner. You might not, or you might be thinking about it, or you might be the hiring manager. You know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume uh, data by using insights from your job post and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. They help you identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. LinkedIn Jobs make it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs at number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidate you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. That commercial sounds just like Justin Dietrich, right? All right. So we're going to stay on the recruiting tangent for the show. The first episode of Locked on USC this week. High school recruiting. I mentioned it. Um, it's the foundation of every single program. Well, it's off and running uh, with the staff on the road. They're making school visits. Um, I don't know how many they're going to get to uh, during this time, but they're going to get to as many high schools as humanly possible, knowing Lincoln Riley and his coaching staff. And even though the class of 2023 isn't quite finished yet, uh, Letter of Intent Day is in February, first Wednesday, and then as I talked about, the uh, the portal is still open for a few more days. I think until the 18th is when it closes. But that just means it's time for the staff, you know, to start getting serious about the 2024 guys and beyond, even 2025. Um, this is when I start paying attention uh, to the names as well, 2024. I have a general rule. This is my rule of thumb. It works for me. I love following recruiting, but at the same time, I I need to kind of take a step back and remember, um, following the whims of high school guys, high school kids, 14, 15, 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, I like to wait until they're, they have at least played their junior year of high school um, before I start looking at them as, as a commodity. And let's be honest, that's what these guys are when you're, you know, giving them scholarship opportunities to come to your school. They're a commodity. They're a student athlete. They're human beings. But when you break it down, they're, they're somebody you want to use and you need, but they're replaceable. And that's why recruiting goes year to year. That's what the transfer portal is around. It's a, it's a harsh way of looking at it, but it's the reality of it. So again, um, these guys, 2024, I'm going to start getting up, doing a deeper dive into uh, seeing how they've been developing and you know how serious you know, they are about USC, how serious USC is about them. Because if they're not a, if they're not on USC's radar, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going. Oh man, I really wish USC would have got that guy. I'll leave that up to you, the fans. I've been there. I know what it feels like. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, during this off season, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to start hitting up those seven on seven passing events and the big man, you know, the lineman camps, like giants, uh, giant skills, those types of things. And I'll get reacquainted um, with the next batch of uh, hopefully future Trojans. And this week in recruiting, all the eyes are on at least Trojan fans are going to be on the six commitments. Um, who are uh, going to be participating in the Poly Bowl. Well, five will be participating. Uh, 
Malachi Nelson, the quarterback, uh, he he didn't partic participate in the Under Armour All-Star Game, and I'm not even sure if he's going to be making the trip to Hawaii. He had off-season shoulder surgery, left shoulder, not his throwing shoulder. Um, so whether or not he will be there, is, I'm, not, I'm not even sure. But Makai Lemon will be there. Zachariah Branch will be in Hawaii, as will Quinton Joyner running back, Micah, uh, Micah Benuelos, and Amos Talalele, the last two are offensive linemen. And then USC also has a couple of prospects they're keeping an eye on. Uh, Deuce Robinson, tight end, and Roderick Pleasant. I'll just say this. Um, if you're yay for Roderick, not so yay for Deuce. If you're looking where USC is going to land, I, I think they have a really good chance of getting Roderick Pleasant's commitment in February. Not so much for Deuce Robinson. Everybody's thinking he's leaning towards Georgia. And Amos Talalele, he enrolls the end of June, and but I believe the others that I mentioned are early enrollees. Now, as far as the rest of the 2023 class, uh, the guys who aren't uh, fortunate enough to be in Hawaii for the Poly Bowl, um, I, I think all eyes are going to be, well, actually, Roger Pleasant, he just finished up a, uh, a visit to USC over the weekend and is on his way to Hawaii. He's part of the 2024 class, though, remember. And then um, even though uh, Peyton Woodward, Woodyard uh, isn't going to be a Trojan. Actually, I'm skipping ahead of myself here. So I'm talking about Amos. He said he's going to do his part to recruit while he's at the Poly Bowl. Um, He's going to work on a couple of the guys who are still out there. Obviously, Roderick Pleasant, Deuce Robinson. And even though uh, Peyton Woodyard, has, he's class of 2024, he's committed to Georgia. Um, his teammate and a commitment to Ole Miss, Jordan Lockhart, he was also on a visit to USC over the weekend. And this, again, he's committed to USC, excuse me, to Ole Miss. But he did take a visit, and they're starting to get a feeling that maybe USC can flip him away from Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss back to stay home and maybe come to USC as a linebacker. Here's what it's gonna. Here's what's gonna help that process along. If USC wants to, uh, I guess, repair its defensive relationship with. With St. John Bosco, USC's defense in 2023 is going to need to show signs of improvement. Otherwise, you're going to continue to see those best players go elsewhere. Uh, Vila Amsu is going to Stanford. You've got Woodyard going to Georgia, and you've got Lockhart, who is committed to Ole Miss. Um, there's a chance that can flip. All these guys can flip. <laughs> But I, I think there's, on the defense side of the ball, defensive recruits, they want to see some improvement. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. There, Although, I do want to talk about this. There's another recruiting situation that's starting to develop in and around L.A. Remember the uh, Oregon billboards it, that they erected in USC's backyard about 20 years ago near Galen Center off the 110 freeway? It had the uh, the wide receivers in a certain pose. Well, the University of Arizona is trying to do the same thing. They're starting to put up billboards around the L.A. area um, saying, hey, come to the University of Arizona. It's, I understand why they're doing it. It's, Southern California is a ripe marketplace for recruiting. Pac-12 uses California, Southern California, um, to fill their rosters, as do other conferences. Well, that billboard 20 years ago, it didn't work out too well for Oregon. <clears throat> because for those of you who might remember, uh, it was BMW, Mike Williams, Kerry Colbert, and Kareem Kelly who were standing on the, 
USC Trojan sideline at the end of that game at Austin Stadium that year, mocking that billboard. So this year, USC travels to Oregon. I haven't seen any Oregon billboards. This year, Arizona comes to L.A. We'll see how that all works out. Look, I understand where they're coming from. Arizona's had, they're improving. They found some recruiting success in in Southern California, particularly um, with some of the uh, Servat guys, T Mac, the wide receiver being one of them. We'll see if this strategy works out for them. Again, uh, you really don't want to mess around in USC's backyard too much. Then again. Arizona might say, who cares? USC's out of here in a year anyways. We got Somebody's got to take over the LA market that they're giving up. They're not really giving it up, but you get my point. Okay, so I'm going to, we're going to talk about spring camp coming up in the next segment. But before that, head on over to Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for your sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to the college bowl season, which is now over, to basketball and World Cup. They've got it all for you at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those. And we're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head on over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right. If you haven't heard, I heard that spring camp is scheduled to open March 22nd. It's not that far away. Two months. And what that means is there's not going to be a lot of downtime uh, before the excitement level starts to kind of rise up again. It hasn't really died down, but it's it's kind of in cruise cruise control, I guess is the best way to put it. In that lull between February signing day, you have a poly high school bowl this week, well, the end of this week. Um, so I'm just kind of just in cruise control, waiting for every, everything to kind of come to a head. So, um, and by the time everyone who, and look, and, and by that time when spring camp rolls around, Hopefully, uh, everyone will have moved on from the Riley should have fired Alex Grinch train, and you can you can start your choo choo up again at that time. Uh, spring camp is all about practice and getting ready for fall camp. Literally, um, this is where the staff gets their culture and the playbook installed uh, for all the new guys, the early enrollees, and the mid year enrollee guys. That way, when fall camp does come around, they can just hit the ground running. Spring camp is, I guess, the um, dress rehearsal for what you want to see in fall camp. The fans, well, if you're if you're on WeRSC.com, and if you're not, you need to be, because the fans are over there. They're already buying seats. Literally, they're buying their seats through third hand, you know, third parties, and making their travel plans. For South Bend, they're making they want to go watch USC and Notre Dame play. And if you've never been, you need to make that pilgrimage at least one time in your life. This would probably be a really good year to do it. Caleb Williams, Heisman, Heisman Trophy winner returning. Yeah, I would. Uh, Notre Dame, they're looking, you know, they want to take the next step from what they did in 2022 with their rookie head coach, Marcus Freeman. So, um, really young, exciting team he has, and he can recruit just like Lincoln Riley. Uh, they've already replaced their quarterback, Drew Pine. Uh, they brought in a transfer portal guy, probably a better quarterback, Sam Hartman from Wake Forest. So, even though that game is still off in the October distance, uh, that doesn't mean it's not time to be excited as a Trojan fan, right? Um you can be excited for Solomon Tuliapupu. He's going to come back for another year. Get a chance to get better at his new position. Remember, he tra- he, he's transitioning from All-American high school linebacker to not playing football for three years 
four years, whatever, however long it's been, to he made it through the entire year. And he kept, he was getting better, but he's growing into a new position. Now he'll have another year to tra- make that transition. So what's your way too early storyline for for 23 that's keeping you excited? Uh, what's going to keep that enthusiasm level, you know, redlining for you, so to speak, uh, until the guys get, the team gets back for spring, for spring camp? Talk to me. Tell me what it is. Give me some feedback here. You can follow me on my Twitter at Mark Culkin, M-A-R-C-K-U-L-K-I-N. You can let me know here on YouTube. You can let me know over there on WeRC.com. But again, thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. We come at you five times a week. So this episode's in the books. I'll be back again with another episode tomorrow. So until then, you know what to do.